Actinidia thrive in fertile soil not less than one or one and a half meters thick. They will not yield much fruit in shallow soil. The soil should be moist, but not waterlogged since the roots do not tolerate flooding. For planting, choose a healthy, correctly labeled specimen with one or two stems at the base. Well-developed root system and a minimum 2-litre container. Not a tiny plant in a small pot, but a strong one that will yield fruit sooner, survive the first winter, grow strong and stress-resistant. It should be purchased in a reliable gardening center or a good nursery. Let me recommend these grown in our nursery and labeled with the trademark Sort of the Good Climbers. This is a quality guarantee. Actinidea should be planted out at the same level as they were before. Here is the hole I prepared beforehand. There's the drainage. The root ball has been immersed in water to soak. The root system is well developed. I will plant it at the same level as it was in the container. Actinidea doesn't like to be covered high around the base. It can start rotting here and fungus may develop. I cover the roots with fertile soil. Then the plant needs to be watered and covered. I cover the roots with fertile soil. Then the plant needs to be watered and covered with mulch around the base to prevent the ground from drying since Actinidea are shallow rooted. Besides, it protects the roots from freezing, especially during a harsh, snowless winter. Cultivars of Actinidea that withstand frosts up to 22 degrees, for example, I say, are better planted in the spring. Frost-hardy cultivars like Wakey or Ananasnea can be planted both in autumn and spring. Autumn planting is even better, as the plant can take root before the vegetation starts. Regular watering or installing a watering system should not be overlooked. Dry soil results in drying of the leaves and smaller numbers of fruit, which then may fall before they ripen. How the actinidea should be spaced. If we intend to set up a plantation, which this plant is excellent for, it is best to put 5 by 5 meters distance between each plant. Then, after 20 years of cultivation, the sun will still reach the leaves. If we lack the space, we can limit the distance between plants in a row to two and a half meters, keeping five meters between the rows. It may be necessary in future to cut down every other plant if they grow too dense. Here, they are planted at a closer distance, since we wanted to put different cultivars in a small space. If you plant the female form of Actinidea, remember to place in proximity also a male form that will serve as a pollinator. 
One male plant is enough to pollinate six to eight female ones, as long as it's not further than eight to ten meters. This distance allows insects to transfer pollen to the majority of flowers to secure a good crop. Actinodea can be trained the same way as in professional plantations in a T-letter shape. That is, there's a pole with a perpendicular bar on top, such same construction at a couple of meters distance and stretched between the bars, there are wires along which the shoots will grow. First we train one or two shoots of the planted vine at two or two and a half meters height. Then we prune them. From the new shoots we train two along the wire. After they've reached about one and a half to two meters, prune those. Next year, side shoots will grow from the buds. And they should be pruned after the sixth or eighth bud. On these shoots, fertile shoots will grow with fruit germs. Following this scheme, we will gather the first berries in the fourth year. If you want to quicken the process, which is possible with some cultivars that yield fruit in the second or third year, you need to take some shortcuts. The basic pruning, that is pruning the main shoot and side shoots, can be performed very early in the spring. It should be at the end of February or in March, before the vegetation starts. If sap starts flowing after the first cut was made, that means we shouldn't carry on with the pruning. The plant would pay dearly for that. If we were late starting the pruning in springtime, we can have another go not sooner than in June. The excess growth that thickens the plant limiting its access to sunlight should be removed. Thinning is performed in summer, in the second half of July, and its purpose is to expose the berries to the sun to let them color nicely. On the shaded side, they remain green, so those shielded from the sun will be green all over. This applies to the cultivars that develop blush on their fruit, such as Wakey, Geneva and Ananasnea. In an amateur garden, Actinodea also can be trained as a vine over the arbor or a pergola as long as it's in a sunny spot. It can be left to grow in a free manner or be pruned moderately if it serves as an ornamental plant with only a small number of berries. You should also train it along a net, trellis or fence. In this case, you need to train one or two shoots upward in a similar way as with the T letter shape. After pruning, new shoots need to be spread to the sides and attached to the net. The distance between the shoots should be around 20 to 30 centimeters. When the branches reach one and a half or two meters length, they need pruning. Then they will develop side shoots on which the fruit sets. 
jest szczególnie istotne, żeby całości za bardzo nie zacisnąć. In this case, thinning is vital to avoid overshadowing the berries. When the plants are properly pruned and trained, they will yield a good crop of delicious fruit.